I'm standing here with former National FA champion, famous coach, incredible personality, and leader of the free world of FA, Paul Soder. All right, Paul Soder. So tell me, how did you get started into the world of being a top FA coach? What started you? I started fencing in high school because I had a friend who fenced. Uh, Where was this? It was in New Jersey. Uh, Where? In Princeton. The Hunt Real. School. At the Hunt School? Mm -hmm. And uh, I started fencing Sabre because that's what he fenced. Who was the coach? Uh, well, the coach was uh, Stan Seja. Really? Coach of Princeton. That's right. Hall of Fame coach Stan Seja. And uh, I started fencing Sabre and Foil because everybody had to fence Foil. And I really liked Sabre. And I fenced mostly Sabre until I started to compete. And in those days, Sabre was not electric. And there were just many circumstances. And what year was this? This was in 1969. Okay, so we had 20 years before it became electric. That's right. That's right. And I discovered pretty early on that I didn't have the temperament for Sabre, standard Sabre go. You were too easygoing? Exactly. Exactly. And exactly. so what happened next? And so uh, I started, I fenced a little bit of Epe at the time. Uh, and the more I fenced, the more I liked it. And people, in those days, Epe was dominated by big, tall, calm guys. And so people would look at me and say, are oh, you fencing Epe? You're really too short for Epe. And I, and I always appreciated that. So the more people told me I was too short for Epe, the more I liked it. And, uh, you know, after a few years of Epe, I started having success. And I Who coached you next? Bill O'Brien. Bill and so you were already with William O'Brien in San Francisco? Yes. yes. <clears throat> so when did you go to San Francisco? I went to San Francisco to go to college, and I started fencing at the Army Medical Center with Bill O'Brien in about 1971, 70 or 71. Tell me about Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien was a native Californian, native San Franciscan, uh, and fenced and taught fencing for 60 years in San Francisco. And he produced national level fencers in all three weapons. Uh, and uh, he taught me things as a coach that I still use as a coach today. Give me an and example. I'll give you a great example. So now that the flick is gone from foil, uh, he taught me foil in the pre-flick days. So what you had to do instead of making a sharp flick with your wrist and fingers was you had to establish position with your arm and make a hard jabbing thrust with your hand, which as you will know is exactly what's being done now. So I give foil lessons now and I say, okay, well, we're going to work on something specific to the specific like that and the kids wonder where I learned it. Uh, I learned it 40 years ago from Bill O'Brien. That's fabulous. So after Bill O'Brien, how long were you with Bill? I was with Bill for about uh, six or eight years. Uh, and then I worked at Rob Hammond and I published on for a while. And then I went to Germany. I went to Germany uh, for four or five years. And that was at the time when the Germans were really at the top of the world uh, in Epe, Men's Epe. And uh, you changed your approach? Oh, well, sure. Sure. In what way would you say it changed it? Uh, it, it, it made me appreciate uh, uh, the necessity of constantly putting pressure on people. In the United States earlier, the tendency was to fence a little, then back off and look at each other, fence a little, then back off and look at each other. Well, the Germans at that time were so back now. It was bang, 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 bang. bang. You fight until the referee came up and pulled you apart. And, um, and uh, so that made a big difference uh, in my approach. Of course, it improved my reflexes, and I got to learn a lot about tactics uh, and watched fence, some of the best fencers in the world, constantly for four years. Uh, I got better. And then when I came back to the United States, I fenced at the Hubble Top Fencers Club. Um, Coached by a succession of people, Rob Handelman, Craig Cummings, Peter Burchard, Paul Harkness. Tell me about your national title. Uh, it was in 1984. Uh, I had had a number of injuries earlier in the year, so I wasn't a serious candidate for the Olympics. Uh, but I, uh, everything was healed by nationals, and uh, I had a good day, and I. 
the people that are standing in your way, so to speak, to win the Nationals? Who are the hardest to do? Uh, well, actually, I had, a, I had what looks in retrospect like a fairly hard row up, uh, way up. I fenced uh, John Moreau, who was on the Olympic team that year. I fenced Tim Glass, who had been on the Pan Am team the previous year. I fenced my teammate, Roger Cox, from the final. Then I fenced Steve Trevor, who was on the Olympic team. And then I fenced Steve Shelley the first. It was awesome. Right. Well, that's bad. Yeah, it was a good day. Now, give me a little bit about what's it been like to take up your new club, new, compared to Halberstadt sure. and Letterman. Sure. Well, uh, when did you found your club? In 1997, uh, uh, Mike Peterson, Maureen Griffin, and I, and Craig Cummings, left uh, Halberstadt and found the Golden Gate Fencing Center. Uh, it was just a philosophical. Uh, focus at the time. We wanted to work on, we wanted to emphasize uh, competitive fencing and at that time we had a club. And uh, we started our own club. Uh, we've been at it ever since. Uh, it's been a uh, challenge, but uh, it was great. It was a great decision. I'm really happy we did it. And uh, I think it's a good club and we're doing the best we can. That's fabulous. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Andy. Paul Soder, national champion, huge coach in America. Thanks very much.